No, I don't think so. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session. I hope everyone can hear me and audio is there. Thank you, everyone who joined. And Harshit, can you hear me? Please just let me know so audio and video in place, and you can see the slide. Then we will kickstart this session and go um, and cover today's topic, which is going to be all you need to know about Azure Bicep configuration. So seems, yeah, seems audio and everything is there. Thank you for confirming that. Uh, so before start, I would like again, thank you everyone who made this time to join the festive tech cal calendar. Festi uh, sorry, who made this time to join festive tech calendar 2022. <clears throat> sorry, and big thanks for the organizers of the event and especially to Azure Greg and Keys and everyone who is involved in this event. Uh, let's look at today's bicep session that I'm going to present. And it is in the spirit of festive tech calendar, we will explore and demonstrate all about Azure bicep config files and why to use them and how to customize them. The reason is simple. These arrangements will basically help to build Teams standard it will help to build team standards and increase your productivity while creating Azure infrastructure code. Now, to everyone who was able to join live again, uh, my uh, big thanks for being here. And please use comments and drop a line that talks about what you do and in what you are interested in. And please, uh, you know, let me know is there anything specific about Azure Bicep or its config file that you are interested to learn about? I would be happy to, you know, guide you in that uh, in that matter. All right, that's said. Next, uh, you see some information about myself here listed, and I have been a proud MCT since 2007, and feel blessed and honored to be one of the Microsoft Azure MVPs. And I would like to thank everyone in the cloud community who strive every day to make world a better place. I'm a founder of the Cloud Marathoner blog, where you see the uh, link in the bottom. And I'm also where I'm actually helping everyone. And as well as it's all about this blog, a Cloud Marathoner is all about cloud journey that's focused on hands-on automation skills and upskilling through cloud skill challenge and as well as certifications. My blog encourages everyone to in everyone uh, in information domain to share useful tips and bits in their cloud journey. And it's uh, focused on helping to the beginners as well. So in the cloud community, uh, I'm also core member at cloud launch and learn team and uh, we are there to help to organize and as well as present weekly sessions. I will take a few moments to introduce uh, before introducing, you know, the company where I'm working. Uh, I would like to show the festive tech calendar event site. If you never actually had a chance to go there, this is the festive tech calendar event and all the sessions here. Uh, it started from December 1 and it goes till the end. So. Feel free to check other sessions if you have any interest. Now, let's come back and I'll give a couple points about the place um, where I'm working. Uh, I'm working for T-Rex Solutions, which is a, which is the company infographic that you see on the screen. And I'm proudly delivering mission critical cloud enabled solutions to our customers with our teams of engineers. We have strong partnership with CSPs, cloud solution providers, and our company supports local communities in need. T-Rex Solutions is a mid-sized company and is mainly specialized in serving government and federal civilian agencies, with US Census and DHA being the largest customers. Uh, where our team 
did an excellent job in the middle of pandemic by flawlessly delivering and executing US 2020 census with our partners. So check out our open positions and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. OK, now let's switch the gears and look what we are going to cover on to in today's session. So we will start with what is Azure BICEP language and then we will look into why BICEP language is actually important for you. In, you know, if you are going to deal with Azure uh, infrastructure management by creating the code. Then we'll look into BICEP configuration file and what it is and what are the things that you have to know and what are the limitations and as well as recommendations. Then we'll look into best practices while using them. And finally, we'll have a couple demos and Q&A session at the end. All right, I hope that's interesting for you. Um, please let me know if you are, um, is everything fine? You can hear and see the slides well. So just uh, put the notice there uh, or, uh, and as well as, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, this session is recorded. So if you have to step out and step back, no problem. It's going to be uploaded on Cloud Marathoners YouTube channel. All right, let's uh, continue from here. So first we will start with a very basic question. And I'm going to fast forward that if you already familiar with BICEP. So I'm just going to ask to the people who joined online, are you familiar with uh, uh, Azure BICEP and what type of experience you had so far? Please, you know, put that in comment. If you are going to watch this later on, you are more than welcome to put that in the YouTube channel comment, uh, in, into the YouTube channel comments, sorry. Um, OK, we have a couple people who joined who are not familiar, so I'm going to start then from the beginning, OK, so that you are covered. So what is Azure BICEP? So first of all, when we speak about Azure BICEP, it's a new declarative domain specific language, which stands for the DSL. Declarative, it's a domain specific language for provisioning the Azure resources. And the purpose of Azure BICEP is to simplify the resource creation and management experience with a cleaner syntax and more code reuse. This new language aims to make it easier to write infrastructure as a code for developers and DevOps engineers that typically create ARM templates targeting the Azure Resource Manager APIs. Azure BICEP is the simplest way to create, manage your Azure resources. So you can go simpler than that or find a tool or language that can help you in that. So when we deploy Azure BICEP code, it gets transpiled into standard ARM templates. And I'm going to show you how it happens and what's the difference, how, how they look like. So in summary, the Azure ARM templates is a templating engine, whereas when you declare your resources and it will show up like a JSON file, while Azure BICEP is a way to define resources as a code. So, um, and um, we are going to, you are going to see those code in action as well as they set up an environment. Next is, um, let's have a picture, right? So it's picture is better than, you know, 100 words, so to speak. So in this diagram that you go, you are, able to see Azure BICEP works as an abstraction layer here on top over the ARM layer and ARM templates. This is the ARM templates that it gets transpiled and compiled into. All resource types, API versions and properties that are valid on ARM templates are equally valid in Azure BICEP. That's why anything that you can do with Azure ARM templates is doable with Azure BICEP as it provides a transparent abstraction over ARM, which is the Azure Resource Manager layer. In So the Azure ARM templates, which are get, you know, generated from your BICEP code, is a templating engine where you declare resources in JSON, while BICEP language is an abstraction where you define 
your declaration, your Azure resource declaration as a code. All right. Next, we'll look into why by Splunk, right? You need to have these strong reasons in order to invest your time and learn about by language. One of the most important questions is why? So there are a number of reasons and I will give you 10 of them to start with Bicep and get started learning it. I hope that will I hope that will be convincing for a starter if you never did that. So first of all, it's easy to understand and maintain. That's kind of the strengths of Azure Bicep language and it is geared toward people who never had any experience with Azure Bicep uh, infrastructure declaration as a code. Next, it's as a day one support, support, meaning that whenever there is a new feature that arrives or gets enabled on Azure API, on ARM APIs, it's right away accessible with your Bicep language. You don't have to wait for the updates or install anything. Next, uh, it's a transparent abstraction over ARM template that we mentioned. It comes with a very, very, very good, so to speak, awesome tooling on Visual Studio Code, which are which we are going to look into. Next, it is actually built to provide clean code syntax, and it's so that it's easy to understand and easy to maintain. Next, it comes with code reuse and modularity. And what I mean by that is in ARM templates, you still have some reuse, but it is harder to maintain and there are nested templates and other constructs that you have to spend some time to understand and it is not so intuitive because it's generate, it wasn't generated for, uh, for people to understand. Uh, it, it was generated for machines to interpret that code and uh, basically define the infrastructure. But with Bicep language, it is, it's actually targeting uh, to make sure that newcomers, new starters are able to have a uh, have an easy learning experience in understanding and as well as creating Bicep language resources, Bicep, uh, not the Bicep, but Azure resources using the Bicep language. Next, uh, it comes with deep integration with Azure, which is not a surprise. And it comes with all the features that you can get from uh, ARM template and as well as the tooling that's come with command line interface, such as pre-flight validation, which basically helps you to check your uh, changes before deploying them. Uh, and if you are not happy with the changes that are going to be applied to your Azure environment, to your Azure subscription by the uh, Bicep language code, then you can always revert it back and stop from deployment. Or you can also discover any errors or inconsistencies using the pre-flight validation. Next, it doesn't require any state management. So um, there are third party tools as well that you can use for uh, for provisioning infrastructure in Azure. For example, uh, Terraform is one of them. But while using Terraform, you have to maintain the state, which is not the uh, which is a, if you lose that file, it's going to cause a big trouble. With Azure, actually, you don't have to maintain any state file for your Bicep language code and declarations and the state of your Azure resources because Azure itself is a multi-billion state machine that maintains that for you. And checks like pre-flight validation will make sure that you know what type of change you are going to apply to your Azure subscription. And finally, it comes with production support. And this is huge because if you get some issues uh, or there are something that doesn't work, which used to be working, you can always open a, an official um, Microsoft. You can open an official Microsoft ticket from your system and request a help. OK, if there is any questions till this point, please put that in the chat uh, if something is not. Uh, so obvious, I will be happy to look into that. But for now, I'm going to switch to the Visual Studio Code and I will show you what you need to have in place. So I'll bring the Visual Studio Code here 
and make it so before jumping to visual studio code and showing you the code and samples that are going to be used here in this example i want to actually show you where you can find this learn bicep repo okay and um, to show that to you uh, this is you can find it all here at the github repo that's here and you will have a uh, qcr code as a resource from this presentation uh, all the code that you see here are actually coming from the learn bicep repo okay and that's the repo that's going i'm going also to put that in the chat and as well as i will include that in the youtube channel comments so that you can have an access to that code and you can always see what was the original code okay so i hope that would help everyone uh, so all the code again is in Learn Bicep, and Learn Bicep is basically based on the blog post that I did over the time, and more are going to come. And it it has all the you know uh, samples, modules, and some scripts that you may need to know in in order to be able to go and deploy and manage your Azure uh, resources. Okay, so we are going to use them. So let me go back here. And of course, if you find it helpful, you are welcome to fork it and start it. So I'm back in the Visual Studio Code. And first thing, if you want, before starting that, you can have any command line interface tool, it, but I'm using the terminal from Visual Studio Code and I set it up to, the, to start this. So here, if I go and type AZ, bicep and then i want to look into version okay you will see that once i run this command let me make it bigger actually okay is it good please let me know so when i uh if is it is the visual studio code and command line is it visible for everyone please let me know in the chat if it is very small, I can make it bigger so you can enjoy the experience. But for the starters, I just run this command AZ bicep version. And the reason is just to check if I have bicep installed on my environment and what's the version. So I have currently the latest version, but if you want to go and look into the uh, all the commands that AZ bicep, which is the Azure CLI bicep have in place, you can actually go and type AZ bicep and then we'll look into the help. Okay, so here when we look into the help, you see that it has a number of commands and the one that we used actually uh, the version that's here. So if you want to upgrade to the latest, that's there. If you have to install a specific version you can use the install i used that couple times when i had an issue with the latest bicep because as you see from the versioning it is not a stable version 1.0 however it has a production support support that you can rely on so you can use that on your day-to-day -day and as well as production developments but take that with the precaution again it's uh there are certain things that are getting done by bicep team and hopefully this year it will have its stable version 1.0 released okay that's it uh, i will just briefly to show that there was a lot of versioning behind you can always type in order to see the available versions you can type az bicep list versions okay let me make sure it's correct all right, so what we see, you see all the versions, you know, starting from the beta, so to speak, which is 0 0.2 up to the version 0 0.13. So almost, um, I would say every month, Azure Bicep team put some bug fixes and as well as some new features, depending on the progress. So keep an eye on this versioning because it's getting uh, updated almost every month. So I'm going to clean the screen here and finally i want to show you a basically if you want to do the same thing with powershell right it's going to have the similar thing but with powershell you would have to install the powershell environment on your um, local computer so to speak you can also use the powershell core in order to do that you would need 
there are instructions that are actually listed on uh, learn bicep. So here, let me see if it is here. If you don't find these instructions in learn bicep, this is the you just go to the repo and check out the awesome Azure bicep. OK, and here actually you should see that. You should see that here uh, we have the PowerShell command and all the you know information how you need to install it okay and i'll put that here again okay so you can check it out all right so that said i'm going to go back all right um uh just a second there's some um i need to see what's going on All right, we are back. There was a little bit technical difficulties that uh, I resolved. So uh, I hope you are all uh, looking at this uh, bicep, uh, awesome Azure bicep repo so that you can get all the recent and important information about where you can get this information. So to switch the gears here, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, next we are going to look into a bicep file, bicep code, how it actually represents the and declares the Azure resources, and then we switch back and look at the ARM templates, how the ARM templates are actually displayed. So we can actually go and compare one to another to get an understanding, because at the end of the day, all your bicep language code get transpiled into ARM templates and apply to your Azure subscription. So let's do that. So here in the modules, I have this simplistic file called uh, minimum storage. And why I call it minimum storage is because this is the minimum kind of set of things that you can put here. And um, while speaking about that, I'm going to actually speak about the bicep config, which is the linting in Azure Bicep using the Visual Studio Code. So in order to be able to get this, you know, squiggly lines and this nice experience with Azure Bicep, you need to go to the extensions here and make sure that you type here Bicep. So I'm going to type Bicep. It will give you this extension. And in this extension, you want to make sure you install that if you are going to create or manage your Bicep language codes because it comes with many features like IntelliSense, it comes with the with, with a validation feature and autocomplete that are going to be very useful. And in addition to that, you will also have the way to visualize your uh, Azure resources in this uh, Visual Studio Code environment, which is very cool. And I will show you how it's actually done. So first, you need to go and install Bicep language um, extension. Once you're done with that, how you would know if it is installed? Uh, once this is done, then actually you would see this uh, icon, robotic arm. That would mean that uh, for the files where you have Bicep extension, like, like here, as you see this file is a Bicep extension, it's going to recognize those files and then make sure that uh, it can apply this, you know, autocomplete and all the valuable productivity tips and productivity kind of, uh, I would say, you know, it will make sure that you can write down more 
clear and more I would say uh, more clean and as well as the uh, well I would say it's a well designed but it's going to give you this you know well uh, designed and well structured it will uh, help you to write down and guide you in writing down a more productive Azure Bicep code. OK, so once this there, which we are actually there, I'm going to go back to, to this minimum storage. And again, you can go and access this repo from the uh, from my Azure uh, Bicep repo, learn Bicep repo. So once you click on that, you will see that here we have two parameters here. Let me make it so we have two parameters. One's a region, another one is not helpful, meaning that it's not used anywhere. And we have squiggly line here in yellow, meaning there's something probably wrong with that. Then we have the uh, declaration for a storage account that has a name here. It has defined region and stuff like that. But you may say, you know, how I can create a new one. This is an existing one, right? So it's very easy to create a new one. For example, here we have storage account number uh, extension two. So if you want to do very bare minimum uh, with provisioning your new storage account on a given Azure Bicep file, you can just come and say res, which stands for resource, and put the dash and type storage. So once you type even STO, it will give you options. So you can click on that and then it will give you this nice way how you can go and uh, using the tabs kind of change the name. So first I'm going to change the name. I will type STG festive. OK, that's going to be festive drive name of the storage account. I'm going to use the same. Um, this is the type of the resource and here on the end we actually have the version API of this resource. And then it asks me for the name. So for the name, I'm going to uh, type the name Azure Fest Festive. And then we can put today's date. Or we can put, because I'm using that already, Festive Calendar 2022. Okay, and here's the thing because this naming, you need to be aware that what are the limitations and restrictions on Azure Storage account naming. There are actually, it needs to be uh, at least to have three characters, and I believe it needs to be up to 36 or something like that. So there is a limited number of characters, and you, you can have only alphanumeric. Uh, alphanumeric name for your storage account. So if you put something with the dashes or special characters there or spaces, it will just fail. So keep that in mind, that would fail during the... Then it asks for the location here, which is the Azure region where you want that to be provisioned. Because I already have here a parameter defined region, I'm going to reuse that one uh, and type this region parameter. And then it asks for the type and kind. So here, in terms of SKU, it's a SKU of the storage account you want to provision. And if you are doing that for testing and not for the production, it makes sure it makes sense to have a standard locally redundant storage, which I'm going to choose here uh, because that's going to be the cheapest that you can go and practice. But for production environment, of course, you need to choose the appropriate SKU of your storage account. So once we saved it, I'm, uh, we put that here. I'm going to save it. You can also add the tags as it's uh, as it is, you know, uh, added here on the first one. So here we have three storage accounts. But before jumping the guns, I want to show you what you are seeing when you due to this yellow squiggle lines. This is something that actual bicep config file is helping us to recognize. And in this case, it says that this parameter, which is named not helpful, is actually declared but never used. It's not part of, uh, is even though we declare that in our Bicep language code, it is not used in our files. So that's why um, if you want, you can go and remove that. But the reason why it appears is again, because I have a Bicep config file. And where it is, 
Well, if you scroll down here, you would see that uh, at the end I have bicep config JSON file, and I'm going to talk more about that in upcoming slide. But this is the reason because here I say no unused parameters. This is one of the rules that I have, and I put the warning. That's why it's coming with yellow squiggle lines. There are other warning levels which we are going to cover momentarily, uh, which we are going to cover today in our session. So here I have one, two, three storage accounts. Uh, there's no squiggle lines. So if this one is actually not good, you can always go and comment it out so that it doesn't, you know, appear. Um, so here on the right side, you also have this very useful gadget called visualization. So if you click on that gadget, you would see that what we have on the right side is the declaration of the resources that uh, we have on the left side. So we have storage account as first uh, resource. We have second resource with storage account two, and we have uh, our final resource here on this file, which is storage festive drive. That happens here. So this is a very cool way to go and look, especially if you are dealing with the bigger files that come with the storage account. So I'm going to close this for now, and then what we are going to do here is we are going to generate and build a ARM template for this. Uh, file where we have three storage accounts. To do that, <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward. We just need to use the az bicep build command. And then we need to navigate to the file where I'm going to dash dash and say file. And then we know that it locate it. This file is located under the modules folder and start with the minimum storage. So once we have it here and click on enter, what happens is actually okay. What happens is actually let me see. There's okay. There was somebody wanted to uh, chime in. What happens is actually it's going to generate for us a JSON representation, which is basically your ARM template representation of the Azure Bicep uh, code. All right, and if you compare that with the other one, let's do that. Um, here I'm going to split the screens using this handy feature. So here on the left side in a minimum storage, okay, we have declaration in bicep language where you see that it defines the resource type and as well as the API and all its properties. There are three of them here on the right side. We have the same declaration in ARM templates, which is the uh, way how it used to be a year, two years ago that you had on Azure in order to declare the your infrastructure in Azure environment, you had only ARM templates. And this is the JSON file. As you see, it has a schema. It tells us how this file has been generated for us in the metadata. Then, of course, you have defined parameters here. Is which which is the correct? It's called the region, and we have a region parameter here on top. Then it defines each resource in its own declaration, uh, and it kind of you know wraps it up. So that's how it is. So this is more of a JSON structure, which is which requires much more, I would say, learning curve to understand what's the correct syntax. But on the right side, you if you are familiar with any coding language. Um, and um, it's much more simpler to read and understand. OK, that's kind of one of the biggest advantages having the Azure Bicep code to manage your existing Azure infrastructure. So next I'm going to jump back to the slides here. So you saw here in a previous demo, I showed you the difference and as well as how to interpret, uh, how to understand if you have your Azure Bicep uh, actually installed how to check your versioning. However, if you want to look at more in detail, here are the QCR links and I'll come back to that at the end of the session that you can use. So this awesome Azure Bicep is the one that where you can get the learning references and everything. This is the GitHub repo. You have another learn Bicep is the GitHub repo that I'm using for today's presentation. 
And of course, you have a video course, Azure Bicep First Look, that you can check it out. And as well as you can visit the official Bicep Project GitHub um, project. OK, that said, I'm switching the uh, let's move forward. So what is the default Bicep linter rules? So linting is all about validations, autocomplete, and making sure that the best practices are applied there. It also uses some AI behind the scene. But um, if you look at that, it comes with certain advantages. First one is it's integrated into Bicep CLI, which is the command line interface and extension. And uh, second, these linter rules are taken from the RMTTK test cases, which stands for the Azure Resource Manager Template test toolkits and it checks whether your template uses the recommended practices and when your template is not compliant with recommended practices it returns a list of warnings with a suggested change next in order to use bicep linter rules you need to have a bicep version greater or equal to 0 0.4 and finally you can actually customize these options and you will see you know what are the rules and everything in order to be able to look at that uh, so in terms of references again uh, i'll put the references uh, for more details but on this um, microsoft uh, learning document you have this use of bicep linter rules and you will see that information that I displayed is actually also uh, written here. So default rules are listed here. There are a couple dozen of them and there is a way how you, you can also see them in action using the Visual Studio Code. OK, I'm going to make sure this link is also here posted on the chat so you can actually reference it back later on and you can get these links again from the GitHub repos that I just show you. Yeah, within that Azure Bicep uh, GitHub repo. OK, so let me uh, switch the gears here and go to the next one. So with that in mind, that what is the Bicep um, linter, which is basically validation and best practices that are provided to you uh, in the code interface within the Visual Studio Code. Uh, next thing would be to look into and answer these questions. What is this config file? How I can create one? Second, uh, why you need one? So I hope by now you know that why you need one. It's, it makes it easier to apply your uh, standards, your company standards, and as well as your programming team standards into the code creation and code creation into your Azure Bicep codes. Um, so that it's, it's more compliant with your company standards. Second, when you have your Bicep config rule, it's going to override the default rules that I just mentioned and put the link about. And now you are going to see how to create one in the next demo. And let's look at that. So let's look how you can create one. So in order to create one, you need to go back to Bicep Learn GitHub repo, okay? And there, depending the scope where you want to actually create one, you can put that bicep config that JSON file there. So as you see, it's a part of the analyzer. So you need to have this analyzer in your bicep config. And you can here, you need to make sure it's enabled. If it is disabled, it's actually not going to use those rules and would not apply them while analyzing your bicep config. And second thing here is if you want a more detailed messaging, you can turn on verbose. That's one of the features and settings you can use. And the rest are the rules that you saw on my previous, uh, that you saw on that uh, Microsoft document link that I showed you. Uh, you can look at each of them and get the details. But overall, uh, I'm using a couple of them here. Uh, as you see here, I'm making sure that if I have if my code has any hard-coded environment URL, it's going to warn me. And regarding these levels, if you want to make sure that certain rules, if they are actually not followed or there's a violation, if you want to make sure that uh, your code shouldn't be you know, deployed, 
is that state. If if there is an error in the validation codes, then you need to come here and put here semicolon and choose one of these four um, options. So if you want your code fail because there is a violation in rule which is important for your team and uh, one of the important compliance points uh, within the code that you provide to your customers, then you want to make sure it's actually end up in error. If it is something that you can live with, but you don't want your code to fail while building and then deploying, you can always use the warning. But if you want to switch off uh, rules for some reason, that's another option that you can use. And you have the info option where it's basically not while deploying and uh, building your ARM template from the bicep code, it's not going to appear on your command line if you choose that option. All right. So um, again, if you look at this, I have um, except uh, certain rules here. One of them, no unused variables, no unused parameters, and then uh, prefer interpolation. And when there's an option for that, it will actually have this uh, recommendation for you. And I have certain errors. For example, I'm making sure that if there's a no secure parameter, uh, then uh, it's going to fail because this is something important for my coding standards. OK, that said, I'm going to switch the gears here. And uh, we're going to look into demos, OK, uh, and some best practices. So before going to the demos, um, in terms of best practices, you need to keep in mind that modular approach in your Azure Bicep code and Azure Bicep environment is important and you can achieve that easily with Bicep language. You need to keep your templates as generic as possible and have this parameterization and as well as make sure that you use parameter files between different environments. That's going to, you know, elevate a lot of burden to maintain those uh, different environments for you. Uh, and next, after the parameterization, you want to make sure you have some type of automated deployment, which is done through the pipeline like GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps pipelines, so that on an, each time when your code base is changing, when you are changing the resources, how they are declared and defined in your uh, important in your Azure subscription, you actually get a fresh build. And if there's any errors, the linters and others will tell you. And basically, you will fail your code fast to make sure that you detect any issues early in the game, and you don't detect them back after the staging or production environment is deployed. And to see that in action, uh, let me actually go back to the. So now we are going to start with the demos. So one of the demos I would like you to look into is actually in terms of how you manage the modules and peak deployments in your Azure uh, subscription. And to do that, we are going to go and look into the samples. And here I have this file seven deploy modules with parameter. So as you see here, uh, I have some description. It has a target scope where I want to deploy this. It's not a resource group, but it is a number of resource groups. It has secure parameter here, and it might be a bit daunting and hard to grasp all the files when your environment grows and you have many resources in your environment. So to do that, uh, in order to get a quick view into what's going on in your declaration file, you can always go and click on this visualizer, Bicep Visualizer, and it will tell us, you know, what are the expected resources on this file that get deployed. So as you see, there's a number of resources here, and it's mainly going to deploy the app services for us. We have a deployment of storage accounts. We have deployment of uh, Azure Virtual Machine and related infrastructure. In addition to networking, we have a network security group. So all these can be defined easily using your uh, Bicep language code, and there are a number of templates that can help you in that. So to come back to our code, so it's actually pretty short. It's uh, less than 100 lines, but there's so much declarations. And the reason why we were able to do that, 
So there's a parameter here. Yeah. So when you get this Google line, it means it's actually asking for parameter. OK, uh, because I made a change to this file. If you go to this file, it would tell us that there is a parameter introduced here. Which is the Azure region, which is, uh, I believe, missing from my declaration. So I will go back to this declaration and here in parameters, it tells me that Azure region is actually assign an explicit value and this default value may not give the intent. So, hey, you know, if you want to do, go and define. So I'm going to add this Azure region new parameter that wasn't there before, and I'm going to, uh, this is called Azure region here, the same as you see, because I have this Azure region defined in this deploy 7-deploy modules file and my Azure region is defined here as East US. So we get, as you see, you now once I put that parameter information, which was a squiggly line before it actually disappeared, it's gone. So the thing, thing is why we have, so there's some reference module, you can get this, but don't worry about this uh, squiggly lines. How you would know that it's going to cause you, cause you any issues or not, you, you can, give it a build and see what happens. For example, if I want to go and look at the build of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click on new terminal. And then I would say, OK, you know, easy bicep. Then we are going to build as we did, uh, you know, in the beginning of session, we'll put the location dash dash F. And then we know that this file is actually located under the samples. So we'll put the samples folder and then 7-deploy and I'll press on tab here. It will autocomplete. So once we build that, what we are going to get is the ARM templates, which we can take and deploy, you know, wherever we want. So let me click on enter here so that our build process is actually going to build another file is the same name, but it will have OK, so it's a fail to parse the content of bicep configuration file. So it's a valid JSON. So there is some issue in our bicep config JSON. OK, so what we're going to do, we are going to go and troubleshoot that. Uh, this was not part of the demo. So this experiment that's going on, probably I forgot to do something. That's why. So as you see here, uh, there is something wrong. Let me see. So yes, so because we actually removed something, but I forgot to, you know, to put the level here. So this level was a warning for me. So let's put that and save this. So so our bicep config file is actually have all the values. I'm going to close it. And the operation that just failed for us, I'm going to repeat that. Again, the reason was that our bicep config file had some change. And I forgot to revert those changes that I, you know, did just a few minutes ago. So I'm going to rerun that command az bicep build dash dash f for the same file seven dash deploy. And fingers crossed this time to make sure it's actually compiles and brings. So these yellow squiggle lines say that there is something that could be improved. And this is the verbose kind of interpretation. But here on the left side, you have another file appeared, which is your ARM template representation of the bicep. So let's click on that. And then let's put it down. And as you see, this is the, you know, your ARM template that get generated from that modules and everything that I just show you. And to be sure, you can always go and click on this widget here, okay? Uh, and that widget will actually tell you what are the resources. These are the same type of resources, storage account, Azure Virtual Machine, you know, uh, database, and as well as containers that get actually provisioned. So I'm going to close this. So this is the basically shows that our, uh, our build process succeeded and we have this ARM template ready. So once we have that, here ready we need to move to the next one next demo 
And in next demo, I'm going to actually deploy them into the live Azure subscription environment, and you would see how it actually matches it up, how it all works together. Okay. So to show this demo, I'm going before, and if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. I'm going to go back to my Azure by Spin environment, and here I'm going to pick up a different file from modules called um, here in modules we have the storage with loop containers that bicep and uh, what we're going to do with this is uh, we are actually going to create a new resource group okay uh, we're going to create a new resource group using our azure bicep cli skills and then we are going to deploy this storage account with different containers and with the lock security lock on top of the storage account to make sure that nobody can go and delete our important resources storage resources uh you know by accident all right to do that before we're doing that i'm going to click on this um, and as you see by default it's going to deploy one storage account with many containers in it and in addition to containers it's going to deploy this lock security lock on our storage account all right so let's do that so before doing this deployment i'm going to open the terminal okay let's bring the terminal back all right you don't need all of this Okay, our terminal is back. Before doing anything, you want to make sure you get your subscription and you are logged into Azure. Okay, in my case, what I have is I have this um, subscription, and I, as you see, I have like five um, resource groups. So to do that, in order to check it, I'm going to go and make sure that I'm on the proper Azure subscription and I'm going to run this command az account show query. It tells me that hey, you're on this subscription, which is a correct. Next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to type az group list dash o table, which is going to print out the same resource group that we saw. These are the five resource groups that you just show on the Azure subscription. Next, I'm going to actually create a new resource group, okay? And this resource group, I'm going to let me clean this here, and I'm going to create a resource group in the location East US, and that's going to be the name of my resource group, which is the resource group dash cloud marathoner. And to make sure that it's there before we do anything else, uh, I can go back to my Azure portal, and here we have five, so I'm going to refresh this. And as you see, resource group Cloud Marathoner is here, which is great. And if you want to make sure it's actually there programmatically, you can always type az group list dash o, which is the output table. So if you press on enter, it will go and tell us that, hey, you know, that resource group is created, it's there, which is what we expected. So next, I'm going to clean everything here. And we're going to go and create this. Uh, we want to deploy our storage with loops. So what it's going to do, this uh, code is actually, it's going to create a new storage account, okay? And the storage account name will start with FTC, which is the festive tech calendar. Then we'll have some, you know, unique string here from the resource group. Then uh, I have this, a naming container names here, which we have three names here, logs, inputs, and outputs. In order to create them, here we have a squiggly line. It says that, hey, you know, there's something wrong. Uh, maybe you don't, you would like to declare this as a parameter. And you can say, yes, I can go and declare that as a parameter. And to do that, what you can do, you can always come uh, and type here, param Azure region, okay, and then, this is the resource group function uh, but before equal you want to make sure you have a type for your parameter and then here we are going to utilize our parameter so we don't have any yellow google lines so we have this azure region defined which is going to pick up the location from resource group uh, where it's going to be deployed 
Then it actually creates this storage account that start with the name FTC, and then there's something coming up after that. Then we define actual Azure Blob service uh, within the storage account, and then we create our first Blob service. We give it the container name data log, and then we actually use the enumeration. So what it is, is basically going to go and look to our container names and create uh, within the same storage account um, three more containers. And those containers needs to have these names. They should have, you know, these three more container names created using this loop uh, declaration. And then we are going to lock our storage account to prevent from deletion. And we want to make sure that our lock is scoped to the resource that we want to get, uh, you know, prevention from deletion. If you want, you can also use this lock to actually lock all your resource group, or even the, you can also lock the higher level, which is going to be your subscription, so that no one can go and delete anything there. But you need to have a good business justification for that. And usually a resource level or resource group level logs are uh, sufficient enough to make sure that uh, your data storage, your storage accounts do not get accidentally deleted. There are other ways to prevent that, but this is one of the easiest one that I'm going to rely today. OK, so we are going to deploy this to deploy this. Uh, we already provisioned our resource group, uh, which is the resource group Cloud Marathoner. So I'm going to go ahead and actually run this command AZ deployment. And here, you know, there is something went wrong because at the end of it, we want to have a pre-flight check. And to have a pre-flight check, let me actually Cancel. And then retype it. Let's paste that, but yeah, there's something. Um, let me make sure it's correct. So we need to have a dash C. So what is dash C at the end? You know, dash C at the end is actually your pre-flight condition saying that before deploying this resource, let us know what are the changes. OK, this is your pre-flight validation, so to speak. So I'm going to run that now. And this is going to deploy our storage with loop containers into the resource group RG dash cloud marathoner. Let's do that. So while it's not going to actually deploy, it's going to go and uh, make some calculations and say that what are the resources that are going to be what are the new resources that are going to be uh, created added or updated or removed from our from our resource group called uh, resource group dash rg dash cloud marathoner so it's running this check as you see it came back with this green stuff which is all about you know what are the new things that will get generated so it say that this is going to be our new storage account name okay it's going to be generated and then it talks about containers. There's like inputs that one of the container names logs. That's another one. So, you know, you understand what's going on. So there there will be uh, seven resources created. So let's say yes, I want that to be done. So now we are giving green light for our deployment. It's it's going to find this uh, bicep config file and look at the rules. If there is something, some big errors, it will actually prevent us from deployment. That's the beauty of bicep config file. But meanwhile, it's deploying. It's deploying this, and I'm going to go back to the bicep uh, to our Azure portal. And if I go to resource group dash cloud marathoner, and here it says one something is getting deployed now. OK, um, you can click on it and it will tell you know what's going to get deployed. So this is the deployment that's actually in progress. It's going to deploy this uh, Azure resources that we defined in our template in our bicep language code. It's called storage with loop containers, which has you know one storage account and many containers in it, which are blob containers. 
okay so it's still in progress it will take a while to run but once it is actually done then we are going to block okay so it's done here which is cool i'm going to switch back to azure portal now and refresh this it says it's done we go to the view of the resource group that we have it shows us the same resource group ftc you know, this is the same storage account name and then within that storage account we'll click on containers and here we see this you know familiar names of the containers that we were expecting to show up as you see they are all empty because they were just deployed and some are still getting deployed that's why it gives an error here and data log is another one still getting deployed so we have what we were expecting to have which is great now what we are going to do next is we want to deploy our lock so that lock is actually deployed so this lock is deployed on top of our storage account so how we would know that where is that lock that resource okay let's go and look at it in our azure portal so here if you go back to the storage account this is the resource where lock deployed you would need to scroll down and find the lock under the settings okay this is the place and when we come here and refresh it we see that there is a lock it wasn't there before right it said don't delete this storage account that we just created and what it means it means that if we go let's look at overview if we go to the storage account and say hey go and delete this it will give us error this is to prevent from manual deletion right now another thing that you can do is you can go and try to delete from uh from your command line right delete those resources and in my case i'm going to try to delete the whole resource group where our storage account is deployed but even before doing that, if you want to go and list of your logs to see you know, where they are. OK, so here's a list. Here's the command. Actually, I say, hey, go and list all the resource group that have this. So if you want to do it better, you can always say dash O and table. Let's see how it will format. The... Yeah, here we go. So this is the name of the log. Uh, don't delete. And this is applied on the, it's actually on this resource group, but it is applied on the storage account. So there's a way how to delete that, but if you go ahead and try to delete the resource group, it shouldn't allow us to be, you know, from, from performing that because here again, let me clean this. I will come back and say, hey, go and, uh, there's something wrong here, Marathoner. So let me type it correct. And we click on enter and let's see what happens. It's that log should prevent us from deletion. Let's say yes, we want to do these operations and it should fail actually. But let's see. It, if it usually takes more time, it means something. Yeah, as you see, we got an error, so uh, nobody can go and by accident delete the resource, important storage resource that we just deployed. OK, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat. I'd be more than happy to help you with those questions. Uh, I'll till the end of the session. But uh, to wrap it, up, wrap it up, what we covered today is we start with the what is Azure Bicep language to give you some background information then we looked into what are the benefits and why we should learn about this new um, language that helps us to manage and author manage and create azure bicep uh, environment resources uh, azure resources sorry not azure bicep resources, but azure environment resources then we looked into bicep configuration file and as well as what are the linting rules that come with it then we look into some best practices in terms of organizing your bicep code and as well as resources, including the uh, logs, how you can apply them and define them on your bicep code. And finally, you saw a couple of demos during this presentation. 
So uh, that's it. I'm still looking at the chat. I don't, uh, and once I see any question, uh, I will respond on them. But meanwhile, uh, I want to thank you everyone for making time this afternoon, joining this uh, Friday afternoon and joining this session. It was truly uh, my pleasure to share the knowledge about Azure Bicep and as well as how you can get upskilled. But again, if you want to links uh, to this, uh, I'll go back here and show these QCR links. So everything that you saw on this presentation can be reached and taken from Learn Bicep GitHub repo. You can go and if you want to start your learning journey, check out awesome Azure Bicep repo. And as well as if you want a video course kind of to get from the beginning from zero to I wouldn't say it from zero to expert, but it because the first look file from zero, let's say to 10, that's you know a good place to start. And as well as if you want to get up to date with the developments and all the new things that are coming to Bicep Project, you can check that repo. All right, that's it. This is the end of the session. Thank you everyone for joining and being part of this demo, part of this session. In truly enjoy the festive tech calendar. Again, thank you everyone, and um, I wish you a great holiday season and as well as great learning season so that you can get uh, those skills, uh, learn them, and put them in action in the work that you are trying to do. Thank you all. Have a great day. I'm stopping recording here. Thank you all.